Today marks the 50th anniversary of China's Cultural Revolution. Here to share her insight on the issue is East Asia editor Go Sui Noi, who was formerly a China correspondent based in Beijing. Welcome, Sui Noi. So what were some of the factors which led to the Cultural Revolution? Well, there are different views to this, and one of this is that the Cultural Revolution had its roots in the Great Leap Forward campaign of 1958 to 1961. This campaign was launched by Mao Zedong, then leader of China, to turn China from an agrarian society into a socialist one. Unfortunately, it failed quite miserably and it led to famines throughout the country that killed an estimated 45 million of the Chinese people. This failure of the Great Leap Forward greatly dented the prestige of Mao Zedong and his hold on power. In order to wrest back power from his rivals, chief of whom was his number two, the president, Liu Shaoqi, he launched the Cultural Revolution. Then there is the Chinese narrative, which is that Mao started this revolution in order to get rid of the remnant traditional and capitalist elements within the Chinese society. What were the key events which took place during the Cultural Revolution and how did it impact people of China? There were two main moves that Mao made, two momentous moves, one of which was to unleash the Red Guards and the second was to call for the destruction of the Four O's. The Red Guards were young people, some as young as 11 or 12 years old, and Mao called these young people to nine rallies in Tiananmen Square in Beijing, where a total of about 13 million young people attended. These young people were given free reign to go out there and um, struggle against the counter-revolutionaries. These would be your intellectuals, your old landlords, your rich peasants, even monks. And they were asked to go out to smash the four O's. Old customs, old culture, old habits, old ideas. And for two years, the young people simply rampaged throughout the country. They destroyed temples, they destroyed historical relics. In Shantou, nearly 300 villages were reduced to poverty simply because they were not allowed to continue with the trade of embroidery because this was considered feudal. In 1968, after the purge of Liu Shaoqi, Mao started another movement, that of up to the mountains and down to the village. This movement was basically to move the Red Guards into the countryside. The Red Guards, as well as young people who were jobless, to go and work and live among the peasants and to learn from them. For these young people, the years that they spent in the countryside, they were years during which their formal education was curtailed. And many of them lost the opportunity to go to university. And so today, sometimes they refer to as the lost generation. So you can see that the cost to China of the Cultural Revolution is very high in economic terms as well as in social terms. Has China learned any lessons from the revolution? Yes, China has learned lessons and it's not always positive. On the side of the party and the government, they learn to be wary of mass movement, of student movements. And you can see that in the brutal crackdown in 1989 of student demonstrations at Tiananmen Square, what we know today as the June 4th incident. And you can see that wariness today as well in the emphasis on stability. In recent years, China spent more on internal security than it does on external defence. But it is not all negative for the people. What they learned was not to trust their leaders all the time, not to have blind faith in their leaders, to think more independently and critically. Unfortunately, because of this suppression of debate by the government, a lot more lessons that could have been learned from the Cultural Revolution was not learned. And I think this is a pity. Thank you so much, Suinoi, for your enlightening insight. And thanks for watching. For more foreign and local news and videos, log on to straitstimes.com.